Today we're going to show our technique for anterior tibial osteotomy. This is a closing wedge. This patient had failed ACLs, uh, multiple of them, with a high tibial slope over 13 degrees. You can see here we placed four pins. We bent them out of the way. We're then going to, this is again a super tubercle. We're going to stay right near the edge of the tubercle. Uh, we're going to do above and below. Again, this is on fluoroscopy. We're watching on x-ray the entire time as we're going towards the back of the knee. We're going to use the TPS saw on all four levels. We place these pins in trajectory together, and then we're going to use a larger saw blade to go above and below the cuts. This is going to continue to finish our cut. These are difficult as they're closing wedge. You're going to go into full extension here so that you can finish off the cut underneath the tubercle. And again, the key here is to be low enough that you have enough purchase to place a plate uh, and compress down. We're going to use sequential osteotomes. Again, always checking on fluoroscopy as we go towards the back of the knee. Sometimes you can use a wedge technique or a laminar spreader. And you can see here we're trying to pull off and pull out the piece that we removed. You can see the piece is removed and now we're starting to get some gapping. We're going to finish off with a little bit more with the TPS saw blade and making sure that we can collapse. This is a really nice technique you can see here. This is actually the guide for a trochleoplasty and you can use this to take out the back part of the closing wedge and you can watch on a frosky to make sure you don't penetrate it and this allows you to take out that cancellous bone. You can see we have a really nice gap there and a good closure. We pre-measured for about a nine millimeter closure to correct about eight degrees. We're going to full extension. You can see that after a while when you continue to work this you can see here that you can now compress this without any fracture and then you're going to use a plate Again, we pre-measured 21 millimeters of bone superiorly, so we're able to get this plate on. This is a locking plate. One is a polyaxial screw. We're going to place two locking screws under fluoroscopic guidance. You're not going to penetrate out the back and making sure you don't go into the joint space. We're able to get good purchase here. And once we fix these down, then we're going to reduce the closing wedge. Reduce the closing wedge, replace a K wire to keep it closed. And then we're going to use the compression screw here. And this will be bicortical, and it's going to compress down the fracture site that we've made, the closing wedge. And then we're going to place the second locking screw in the plate. Here we already have excellent fixation. There's no gapping from zero to 90 degrees. And you can see we've closed down the osteotomy well. For a backup on the lateral side, which we've taken off the lateral compartment to see, we're going to place compression staples. These are about 18 and 20 millimeters. This is further back up. This will be out of the way if we do the revision situation and we can keep these in if we want. Here we're going to compress these staples down. Again, this is extra robust fixation. We're going to place two of them and then we're going to remove the handle and compress both of them down. Again, these compress the osteotomy on that side to help with healing. These patients tend to do quite well with healing, especially if we're able to get the plate fixation on as well. You can see we're easily ranging the knee. There is no gapping whatsoever. I feel really good with letting them start range of motion in about a week or so. You can see good closure. We've completely reduced the slope. Already feels better in terms of Walkman. And the patient will go on to continue weight bearing and have a revision surgery in about six months. Thank you.